An easy way to make your app more polished is to implement animations between router transitions. Today's video is a complete guide to router animations in Angular, and we'll build four different styles that range from a simple fade-in to a complex keyframe sequence of animations. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and grab the full source code from Fireship.io. And before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to the Deal Crunch app, which is a real estate app available on iOS and Android. It was built by one of our pro members and is a great example of what you can do with Angular and Ionic. Now let's first start by looking at the actual animations that we'll build in this video. The first one is just a simple fade in, which is applied to every single route in the app. The second animation is a slide from left to right, and it determines which direction to slide based on data that we pass in through the router configuration. The third one is slightly more complex and adds in transformations so we can make the page kind of rotate in from the top corners. And the fourth and final one uses keyframes to create a sequence of style changes. For example, the new page comes in from the bottom and bumps the old page off and it spins and scales out of the screen. I'm starting off here in my Angular 7 app, and you'll notice that I've generated a handful of components here just so we have something to actually route to. And you don't need to do anything special with these components whatsoever, so we won't even bother looking at them in this video. Then the other thing we'll do in the app module is import the browser animations module and add it to the imports array. From there, we'll go into the HTML in the app component and create a main element, and then define an animation called route animations. And then we'll point this to a method called prepare route, which we'll define in a second. And its job is to determine which animation to apply to a given route. Now, inside of this element, we'll define our router outlet and then give it a template variable name of outlet as well. Now, whenever a route changes, we can animate the content inside of the router outlet. Then you can see above the outlet, I have my actual navigation bar, so this will stay fixed and not be animated between the route changes. Now we'll jump into the app component TypeScript, and you'll see that I'm importing these animations which we have not yet defined. I simply want to point out that we'll be adding these to the animation property in the component decorator, and you can just uncomment whichever animation that you want to use here. In our case, we're going to be defining different animations for different routes, so we need to create this prepare route method to pass in that dynamic data. This is actually taken directly from the Angular docs, and it's technically optional if you're only using a single animation for every route. In that case, you could pass the outlet to the animation directly in the HTML. The last thing we want to do is go into our router configuration, and you'll see we have three routes set up, each one just pointing to a component. When we get to our slider animation, we'll need to determine if a component should slide in from the left or slide in from the right. We can do this by passing in a data attribute, and we'll give it a name of animation. Then we'll define animations named is right and is left. Now that prepare route method that we defined earlier will look for this property and then apply the corresponding animation. The next thing I'm going to do is create a file called routeanimations.ts in the app directory, and then we'll basically import everything under the kitchen sink from Angular animations. The first animation we'll build is the most basic use case, which is just a standard animation that gets applied to every route change. Notice we give the trigger a name of route animations that must match what you entered in the HTML. The next thing we'll do is define a transition, which determines how to apply styles from one animation to the next. In this case, we're using the star arrow syntax to define a wildcard that will apply to every single route transition. Angular animations will apply two pseudo selectors to the elements that we're animating, one called enter and one called leave. So enter is the new page, leave is the old page. And query allows us to actually select these elements from the DOM. So the first step in the transition is to prepare these elements so they can be animated. To do that effectively, we'll position them as absolute, and then we'll also bring the opacity down to zero and then translate them off the screen and scale them down to zero. So basically with this step, we're just creating a starting point from which we can use to animate in the new page. And at the same time, we're immediately hiding the old page. So Angular animations will apply these steps in the transition one after the other. So at this point, we've styled our elements both to be hidden. Now we need to animate in the new page. We can do that by making a query for the enter selector, which again is the new page, and then we'll animate that in. But first I wanna point out that I had to go into the style CSS and set the main element to position relative. This just ensures that you have a consistent style between the page transitions. Now back to our animation, we've queried for the enter selector, then we'll use the animate method to set up the actual transition. We'll give it a timing of 600 milliseconds with the ease function. Then we'll define a style that is basically the endpoint of the animation. So from our starting point, we'll want to set the opacity to 1, scale it to 1, and then set the y-axis translation to 0. So just to recap the entire animation, we start by hiding both the old and new components, then we fade in the new component over the course of 600 milliseconds. The end result looks like this, and the same animation is applied to every route change. But you'll notice our layout has both a right page and a left page, so there's sort of a concept of position within this layout. 
And the next animation will actually take into account the position and do a different animation based on whether or not the component is on the right or the left. Now I'm defining a function called slide2, which will allow us to reuse a lot of the same logic for both the left and right transitions. This animation has multiple transition possibilities, and that's based on the dynamic data that we're passing in through the router config. So any component that transitions to the isLeft animation will slide to the left. And conversely, any component going to the right will slide to the right. Then our middle component doesn't have any animation data defined at all. So we'll also want to set up transitions anytime that we're going from the isRight animation just to any component. That means that we should be moving to the left, so we'll go ahead and use the slide to the left animation. And lastly, we'll do the same thing for the opposite. And now we'll define the actual slide2 function. I'm setting up a variable for optional here because some of these queries will want to be optional in case the actual leaving component isn't present. Then just like we did before, we'll set up some default styles here. In this case, we don't want to actually hide the elements, but we'll just make them positioned absolute and at the top of the page. And then we'll dynamically pass in the direction, which can either be right or left. So those styles are applied to both components, but we want to add an additional style to only the entering component, which will offset it in either direction 100% from its sibling component. At this point, we have two different components that we want to animate, and we want those to happen at the same time, which is why we add them to a group. Otherwise, they would happen one after the other. We can start with the animation for the leaving component. In this case, we'll go ahead and animate it 100% off the screen. So that will move it in the opposite direction of the starting point from the entering component. Then to animate the entering component, we'll just go ahead and set its direction to 0%, which will put it right in the middle where it's supposed to be. And you'll also notice that both of the animations have the same timing function. And the end result is just a smooth sliding animation from left to right. But let's go ahead and move on to transition number three, which is just a variation on this last one, but instead uses CSS transforms. This allows us to achieve that same sliding effect, but we can also do cool things like rotation or scaling or whatever else we want to add in here. We'll start with the same basic setup as last time, and we'll define triggers that go from left to right, but this time you'll notice we're passing in a bunch of named arguments. So our function will take an X value, a Y value, and also a rotation value. So my goal here is basically to give you a function that you can configure with your own arguments to create a whole bunch of different crazy animations. Now if we go down to the actual function, you can see that I'm using destructuring to add named arguments to this function with default values. That's just some useful syntactic sugar if you have a single object as an argument that has default values. Again, we'll start this animation off by styling the enter and leave components. Then we can define our transformations by simply interpolating values into strings. For example, we can add x and y values to translate as percentages, and then a rotation value as degrees for rotate. And you could even extend this with skew and scale or whatever other transformations you want to use. Now if we skip ahead here to the animations, they're pretty much identical to the previous example, except we're adding the values in here for the transforms instead of the direction. Now we're going to switch gears and look at a keyframed animation. Currently all of our animations use a transition, which basically just has a single starting point and ending point. But in many cases with animations, you have multiple intermediate steps that can't be defined by just a single start and end point. So let's go ahead and define a new animation that just uses the wildcard to apply the same animation to every route. Then like every other animation, we'll set the initial position to absolute. Then we'll also set up a group to run the two page animations concurrently. Then in all the previous examples, we just animated to a single style. In this example, we'll use the keyframes function to pass in an array of styles. You can think of these styles as steps in your animation, and you determine where they happen based on the total time by setting an offset value. So an offset of zero will apply the style as soon as the animation starts. Since we're working with the enter component, we'll go ahead and scale it to zero and translate it off the page. Then we'll add a second style with an offset of 0.3, which for a 2000 millisecond animation would be 600 milliseconds. In other words, this style will be applied to the element at 30% of its animation lifecycle. And we'll finish things up by setting a final style with an offset of one, which is the end of the animation. And that will be when the component is fully visible at a scale of one and a translate of zero. Now we'll go down here to the leave component and try to roughly match the keyframes to the entering component. We want to achieve an effect that makes it look like the entering component bumps the old component off the screen. We can achieve that by scaling it up to 600% of its original size, while at the same time rotating it and fading it out to an opacity of zero. The end result is this 3D effect of the pages looking like they're colliding. Hopefully this video gave you an idea of what is possible with Angular router animations, so you can start building your own beautiful transitions between pages in your app. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, and make sure to grab the full source code at Fireship.io. Thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon.